Oh boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Welcome back everybody, Brabent here. Today we are checking out the contents of the brand new update 0.53. Now this is a huge update, so we're going to get straight into it with some of the major changes. So the first change we're going to be talking about is the drying rack. Now this is rather important for every The Forest player. If we go ahead and take a look, this is the old drying rack, and I say old because they have completely revamped it. They have now changed it from this massive one that holds all of this food into a very small one. There we go, we can see that it now only holds one, two, three... Oh, we don't have any more food. It's either going to hold ten or eight pieces of food. Can't really tell. But what do you guys think to this? Let me know. I've got mixed opinions. I kind of like how it's smaller and you could probably fit it in smaller spaces. But I just liked the extra capacity. We're going to move straight on to some of the balancing changes. They reduced the capacity of each air canister in the rebreather from 600 seconds to 300 seconds. So they've halved the time you can be underwater. I think they've probably reduced the time too much. I think it was okay around 400, 500 mark. That was a good time. I mean, 600 was a bit too much, I do agree. A few more balancing changes, mainly for hard mode. The creepy mutants can now travel in groups. That is for both multiplayer and single player. Another change is that overall, more creepy mutants will spawn in hard mode. So that will just make it tougher. It's almost like they've added the more enemies plus mod to the actual game, which is cool. They've also increased the chance of fire mutants spawning in hard mode. So, you'll, you know, the ones that throw the molotovs or the tennis balls that sound like molotovs. You'll have more of those in hard mode now. They've also, for some reason, reduced the amount of skinny mutants overall in hard mode and normal mode. So, normal mode might be a bit easier now. And the tribal leaders, I think they're the guys with the big lights and, like, the decoration on their backs. They have now more health, and that is for both hard mode and the normal mode. So now the balancing's out of the way, we can move on to some of the fun stuff. So, the brand new item in the game, the repair tool. How do you make it? Well, first of all, you get two sticks, you get one rock, 10 tree sap and then two cloth and then boom you can create the repair tool looks really cool i like it it's like you've actually crafted it rather than some of the other tools that look like they've been bodged together but this is like something that you could actually imagine creating so you can rapidly tap it to repair and then you can just hit it once like this it just it works really well so i'm going to use some mods here just to help this video along a little bit otherwise it would take a little bit too long so if we go ahead and build this sounds so good so if we get the katana out real quick and then just bash it to death you can see the icon now shows the hammer so if we go ahead and grab the hammer out the repair tool sorry it's a hammer but it's a repair tool you've got sap we've got 221 you now repair it there you go and then it uses some oh it didn't use any sap i'm not sure if it's supposed to use sap or not it just repairs it but either way i really like that and that's a really cool change. I just like having the extra item. So this next change is primarily for bug fixing. But if you go, I'm just going to go into a dark place here. We'll be able to see it. Now, if we press escape, you can see down in the bottom right that the coordinates shows up in the menu. This is so if you find a bug in a certain location, you can send the coordinates to the devs and they will be able to find it in no time. So in order to help out some of the new forest players, they have also changed the cheat mode allow building destruction. So this was originally iron forest, you have to type it in in the menu, but now it's a cheat mode that you can turn on in the gameplay settings. I think it's just really, I think they should do this with all of them, just move them to the menus. So one change that I think is absolutely fantastic and should have been in the game from day one is arrows now stick into animals. So if we hunt this uh, deer down real quick. There we go, wow, good shot. If we go down here, we should find the arrow stuck in. So yeah, there we are. We can now press E to retrieve the arrow and go ahead and skin the animal. So if you notice my axe, this is another change. My axe, when I skinned it, didn't have any blood on it. And then when you go to skin it, it now adds blood to the axe. So if we go ahead and pick it up, you can see we've got blood on now, which didn't happen before. So now onto some of the major bug fixes. So like I said, I am using mods to help this video out, just speed it along a little bit. One of the changes is that some of the um, the old weapon caches, they have they left in a bunch of holes in the ground. Now they have removed those from the game, so there's no more holes anymore. See these new ones? Well there was some just laying around for some reason, but they have cleared them up. I'll try and find where one was. I think it was here, I'm not sure. There was, uh, I think it was there actually. 
the weapons cache, there was just a massive hole in the ground. If I can find a screenshot, there'll be one on screen right now showing it. But previously there was a bunch of old weapon caches that they hadn't patched up and they've now raised those to be level ground. So one of the changes down in the sinkhole is that they've made it so you can't climb up some of the rock surfaces that you previously could. Now the change here says fixed some rocks and objects inside the sinkhole being climbable with the climbing axe. Now my first thought was oh crap have they made it so you can't use the climbing axe in the cave anymore or the sinkhole cave but you can. It says here on the waterfall that you can interact with it and you can climb out so I'm going to give it a bit of a go here. I'm going to go all the way to the top or most of the way to the top anyway and just see where we get. So I've just transferred from the waterfall onto the main rock and I can still climb up it so Maybe they made some smaller objects down in the actual bottom, but I just don't really know what they were, so I can't show you, unfortunately. But at least you can still climb out of it using the climbing axe. So the next change says, the flintlock pistol sometimes not registering hits on targets. Sorry, fixed. I think I did notice this actually while playing horde mode. If you don't know what horde mode is, it's a hidden mini game in the forest, which does still work in this new update, which is a really good thing as I was quite worried to see that they might remove it because we did make it public but they haven't, it's still in the game, which is great. Now the next change is also with the flintlock pistol and they've also made it so it's easier to hit targets above and below. So if I look up, I'm aiming up now. I used to aim like around here and then the camera just looked up, but if I look down, it's aiming all the way down towards my feet. So that's a rather nice change. So you should be able to aim easier up and down. Although it looks like you can shoot your own foot. So they finally reduced the size of the flintlock pistol ammo on the crafting mat. Before it was gigantic, it covered your entire screen. So now you can successfully share some ammo with your friend. It also says here they've added a multi-view option. I don't really know what that is, so maybe it's the way you can see each thing here. You used to like put them in the center perhaps. So they've changed the tennis racket. So now you can add teeth, feathers, and something else. And glass. Glass? No way! I didn't know you could do that. I thought it was just teeth and feathers, but you can add glass to it. No way! You can add glass? What? Damage, plus damage, minus speed. I think I put it all on the opposite side. The glass is somewhere, but I just can't see it. So yeah, the change now allows you to add glass, strangely, teeth and feathers to the tennis racket, but I just never knew you could add glass anyway. Mind blown. And this next change is that they have fixed the story items replenishing on the yacht even after the player has collected them. So normally there was a magazine here, some other stuff laying around, but if we head on in, oops, they've all gone. The story items have gone, there was a carton, There's um, there was all sorts like a Virginia photo down here. They now don't respawn even after the player has collected them, which is a really cool fix. Now there's also another change for the yacht, now they have fixed a stretched texture. The change log here says fixed stretch texture in yacht salon. I'm not really familiar with the term, if it's this place or down in one of the beds, I honestly have no idea. Plus it's really hard with before, without before and after photos, it's hard to find. I wish I could show you exactly where it was, but it's only a bug fix, it's not that much of a biggie. So in the inventory they have fixed some items having the wrong outline, such as herbs, medicine and berries. So down here, I, I I can tell it's changed, it's just hard to pinpoint exactly what looks different without the before and after photos, like I said before. But these, I think they've always been the same, they look alright. But you can definitely tell with the meds for sure. I just love seeing bug fixes, it's so soothing, I feel refreshed. So this next change is over at the second Modern Axe location. So they have reduced the climbable wall down here, so if we climb down, it used to be like a white pale wall and you could climb down it. But it still is by the looks of it. Oh no, no, it's all rigid now. You used to be able to climb up with the climbing axe for some strange reason. Don't know why they had that. Maybe they didn't add the what well, maybe they added the rope and then forgot to change it. But you can see right here before you used to be able to climb up it with the climbing axe. There's no icon anymore. So this next change may be very difficult to get on camera. So they fixed sometimes the camp cots, the way they call them camp cots, jumping up into the air when they become visible. Now I noticed that does happen with a lot of objects, it happened when we went into that cave just back then. So we found one of the major camps, I think it was these chairs that they were talking about. You did, you did used to notice them flying around for no reason when you loaded them, but it's just a bit too hard to get it on camera. Plus obviously they fixed it now so we won't notice anything anyway. And finally, one of my biggest issues with this inventory right now, was that when you hovered over leaves, the pedometer changed texture. I know, I know, big bug. Big bug, but it had to be fixed. <laughs>
So now they've uh, made it so if you hover over the leaves, the texture doesn't change. It was so random, but it really annoyed me because for some reason it was highly memorable. The next one also applies to the inventory. They've said that they've included another renderer. I don't really quite understand that term, but if they say if they hover over the boots, it now fully renders it. Um, I, you can't see it here that well, but I think the change, you can primarily see it on the feathers. So before, if you used to hover over like all the back stuff, it never used to work properly. All the items just seem a little bit more accurate now. For example, the feathers, you can see it here quite a lot. So now you can hover over the back one's highlighted and then the front one's highlighted. You can primarily see it there in my eyes. It's just a nice, neat little change. Obviously, it still needs a little bit of work, like here, for example, but it's heading in the right direction. I like it. Now, one bug that a lot of people noticed that on the bug forums anyway, was that the plane jumped locations for the first couple of times that you saved the game. It doesn't happen for everyone, it's a very small majority, but it was an issue. So they've added a failsafe where it like logs the location. The change log here says, added a failsafe for the plane hull position saving so that it can no longer get lost sometimes. This next change applies to the bow and arrow, and it was that the arrows sometimes used to bounce off of animals. It was like if you, if you shot them like right on the edge, it used to like jump up and fly away. It's seen me rolling. I wonder what happens if I go ahead and collect the meat. Does the arrow disappear? Did I lose the arrow? Oh, that's cool. That's one thing to note. So collect the arrow first, then collect the meat. Can't carry any more lizard skin. The arrow's still there, but if we go ahead and collect the meat. Yep, the arrow just disappears. Perhaps that's a bug. The next one applies with the bow and arrow again and custom walls. So if we go ahead and build this custom wall, when you used to try and shoot arrows through windows, they used to just get stuck like this. Oh, okay, that was peculiar. They used to just get stuck on the wall like this, but they were floating. You can now shoot through the window and it bounced off, look at that. And you can now shoot through successfully at enemies from your base. Now it does seem fairly accurate, but some of the edges just aren't registering. So it's like anything after this arrow in the window, it will go straight through like that. So yeah, you can see there that it's just clipped off a little bit of the logs. Not sure why that is, but that's a bug for the devs to note. See what I mean with so much to cover? This is taking ages. There's so many changes, it's lush. Now something that I did report as soon as the last update came out, and I don't know why it's taking this long, but it now, when you're building foundations, it now more accurately checks for the player location. Okay, so we go ahead and test it. We've completed this all the way to the last one. If we go and pick it up and we can build it and we can no longer build it. See if we can find the spot, shall we? Ah, oh, hello. I'm kind of been really nitpicky here, but this is a big issue for survival players. But overall, you know, that's a lot better than what it was before. So really cool change. Thank you, N9 Games. So one thing I noticed a couple of updates ago was if you filled the pot with water, for example, it, it applies for several things that doesn't save the data, and you reload the world once you saved it with water. Once you'd load the world, it was empty again. So that's applied for a few things. I'm not sure what the others are, but it notes the old pot as the primary one. The description of this change is fixed some items not retaining their last active bonus and content amount after saving and loading such as the pot not saving the current water. So that rounds up some of the so that rounds up the most important changes for the single player experience. And there's one last thing related to performance. It says here optimized physics CPU usage when there's a raft in the game. That should be a bit better perhaps if you're using multiple rafts around the world. I imagine it will apply for more rafts than one. I always love to see that extra optimization so you can get more out of your computer. Awesome, awesome change. So now we're going to take a look at some of the multiplayer changes. The most noticeable change is that they have added a jacket clothing variation. This is a leather jacket that can be worn over the default t-shirts. They've also fixed the suit clipping through the backpack. You can mainly see this at the straps. I'll put a screenshot on screen right now of what it was like before, and then you can see with the video footage of what it's like now. This next one's really hard to notice without the before and after shots, but we've got some after shots, so they've improved the idle, walking, and running animations for other players. And finally, the last thing in this update to cover is that in multiplayer, they have made all weapons shareable with the metal tray. One thing to note is that it doesn't work with the new repair tool. I guess it's not a weapon, it doesn't deal any damage, but it would be nice if that was a thing. 
Alright everyone, that sums up the new update 0.53. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. If you've got any feedback for me, throw it in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I will catch you in the next video.